very good morning to all of you today we are going to discuss the clinical examination of the higher functions in a normal volunteer or the simulated environment earlier we have discussed the some of the these aspects when we discuss the uh, general examination uh, how to a clinical examination of a subject will be done when we discuss the the first class of clinical examination already we have discussed when we discussed the general examination the general examination when of the subject comes uh, whenever your exam patient we will assess the level of consciousness well being of the subject and his uh, mental status uh, and when uh, how is coherent how is his speech and these things are already we are assessing when we are assessing the uh, general clinical examination in each and every case in particular in detail how will you examining the uh, higher functions or higher mental functions or the higher functions of the individual today we are going to discuss this is a part of every general examination and the and in the in particularly cms examination okay the clinical examination of the higher function today we are going to discuss uh, the learning objects for today's session is the describe the assessment for the different mental status the memory and the speech or the language uh, that uh, they group into three categories and you have to be able to perform the higher level function test by the end of this session you must know the learning objective for the today's session when we discuss the general examination already in the earlier class we have discussed the general appearance the intelligence the mental and emotional status the speech we have discussed when we discuss the in each case with general examination in introduction to the clinical examination session okay um, and when you do in this uh, the gait the body configuration the mental status the speech along with the other things we have already discussed and we discussed the, the, the orientation to time the place uh, uh, the date day the things we have already discussed and this way then what are the uh, higher functions the higher functions also called as the higher mental functions uh, these are the synonyms uh, the examination of the higher function involves the structured assessment assessment of the patient's behavioral and the cognitive functions now uh, this is the structural assessment of the cognitive and the behavioral of, of the individual okay it provides the objective insight into the the examiner's the patient's level of the cognitive functions and his ability or his or her ability to interact with the environment adjust to the existing the social structures uh, and this will give the insight to, uh, to the examiner in a pre operative uh, whenever they are doing the neurosurgery uh, before doing the neurosurgery they will do the assessment even for the any psychiatric or any, any clinical psychology they will do the assessment of the higher functions in detail okay it is not the single function it is a uh, the constellation of the multiple capabilities localized to various parts of the brain some functions have a definite localization while the others have the multiple it cannot be localized to the single area of the brain it occurs as a result of the interaction of the multiple neuronal circuits uh, because of the multiple neuronal circuits uh, also it can occur as we just now discuss the uh, the pre operatively whenever they do the cranial surgery they will assess the cognitive status in a clinical uh, psychologist they do the uh, in detail uh, assessment of this function and nowadays they are doing the three uh, scores they are you know, 30 out of that the patient cognition before and after the surgery assessments uh, it is very important whenever you are doing the neurosurgery and it gives the idea so whether it is reliable uh, some people will say uh, because of the level of consciousness the whether he is saying the some of the peers uh, and all the patients having the hallucinations uh, or the delusions uh, uh, because of to assess the uh, assessment of this mental status is most important and uh, because um, if it is not mental state is not reliable even the history whatever we have taken is also sometimes may not be reliable because he will give the 
it will uh, the history in a bizarre way because uh, suppose if you rely on those history you may be landing the problems whenever you dealing with the patients they don't have their delusions of these things okay uh, the examination provides either exam aid of cognition and where he requires the retraining your patient with aphasia post operative therapy should be more uh, these are the for the planning of the post operative also uh, the speech therapy if you when you have the aphasia okay the higher uh, mental function the higher functions are grouped into three categories the ment number one is the mental status the second is the memory and the third one is the speech the mental status includes the appearance and the behavior of the subject the emotional status of the mood of the subject whether he is having any delusions or the hallucinations and uh, what is his level of consciousness uh, and uh, whether uh, how is whether his orientation to the place time person how intelligent he is also we have to we are assessing during the assessing the mental state of the, the appearance and behavior the emotional status of the mood that whether he is having any delusions or the hallucinations what is the his level of consciousness and how is oriented to the time place and to person and his level of intelligence also yes. the higher functions the appearance behavior and delusions level of orientation the memory general intelligence this is another way do we do the assessment then when you look at the appearance and the behavior we have to say by looking at his low socio economic status uh, when you regard and uh, by occupation from the and from the place where he is coming from uh, you can whether you can assess the appearance uh, and the patient is whether well groomed or uh, uh, or whether he is have uh, personal hygiene like the uh, nails hand hair and his dress so uh, will give the whether the patient appearance is not is having any facial uh, tics uh, the patient is a uh, whether is the patient is or the subject is uh, disturbed or agitated or is having a verbal or the physical aggression whether the uh, the patient attention wanders or is having any flight ideas uh, uh, we will assess whenever you are assessing the appearance and the behavior of the subject the emotional state of the mood the facial expression is the one of the outward signs of the subject's moods uh, because uh, if he is depressed by looking at face uh, whether he is in euphoric state or whether he is uh, happy uh, you can by looking at the patient uh, or the subject you can uh, make the face because the facial expression is uh, one of the outward signs of the subject's mood note the mood is whether is elevated or the depressed there is any abnormal moods like the depression anxiety or the schizophrenia or mania you can know whether he is having any flattening of the emotions whether he is in a appear in a confused state whether he is in living in his own world these are the things you have to note whenever you are assessing the emotional state or the mood of the individual inquire about the his sleep and the dreams also why the insomnia is likely to be due to the many psychological disorders like the mania or the depression can cause the uh, disturbance in the sleep insomnia uh, because of the psychological that is why you have to inquire about the sleep and the dream dreams are frequent and the sleep disturbing in the anxiety states that is why you have to stress more on the sleep and the dreams whenever you are assessing the emotion or the mood the emotional disturbance the episodes of spontaneous weeping and the spontaneous laughing without any provocation without any reasoning he will uh, crying and he is laughing occurs in conditions like the pseudo pathology or the frontal lobe disorders where you see the spontaneous weeping and the spontaneous laughing you will see the delusion and the hallucination delusions are the false belief which will continue to be held despite the evidence of contrary believing that somebody uh, is coming and uh, to kill him or uh, some uh, somebody is following somebody is uh, laughing uh, somebody is thinking that he is not is be somebody is thinking you know, only he thinks that elude you know, the false belief in spite of despite of contrary evidence he, even though he know he doesn't know him he will think that uh, is following or uh, some police people somebody is following and somebody is doing that. these things are the delusion then what is hallucination is a false impression sir it can be a visual it can be auditory it can be a smell uh, taking the rope in, uh, 
to be as a snake uh, the visual hallucination uh, considered the rope as a snake of the visual hallucination the hallucination delusions are commonly associated with the temporal and the occipital occipital lobe lesions where you commonly see the hallucinations of the delusions then level of consciousness uh, is there any clouding of the consciousness ask him to about the uh, events around him is there any dementia like the loss of memory is there, there is is in a deep state of uh, unconsciousness uh, the way the, which we are in we cannot arouse him uh, whether is in a coma the level of consciousness we have in grading whether it is a fully conscious or whether it is a drowsy easily arousable by touching or the noise alert this is for a small period he will be alerted whenever we have a, at the drowsing easily arousable by touching or the noise alert will for a this for a, a short period he will the be the subject will be aroused the stupor the arousable only by vigorous stimulation in the stupor condition i mean where you can arouse by vigorous stimulation only coma is not aroused by any forms of stimulus is a deep state of unconsciousness where you cannot arouse by any forms of now uh, this level of uh, will be assessed by the glasgow coma scale uh, and it will be dealt in detail in the next classes then dementia loss of memory the person is confused regarding the time place and person and he shows the impaired abstraction abilities but he is awake and alert in dementia the subject is alert and awake but He is not oriented to time, place. His abstraction abilities are disturbed. Then, what is orientation to time, place, and person? Ask the patient to uh, ask them about the date, month, and year. The day, uh, or which day? You know, whether he is in the hospital, that uh, whether or uh, whether he is at the home, uh, uh, or whether uh, uh, he will be knowing his relative, or uh, whether he is oriented to the person. the disorientation is a important sign of organic disease of the brain or in the uh, psychiatric disorders where you have the disorientation uh, is an important sign of organic disease of the uh, psychiatric disorders the orientation to time inquiring the exact time during the period of examination the place inquiring the whether the patient is present at the time of examination the person is the identification of his relative or the bystander at the time of examination whether he is able to enter by the compound of the nurse sister or his relative uh, which place is uh, staying these are the questions where you ask to orientation the time place to the person then the intelligence is evident but during the history training whether when or you are asking the questions or so is answering the you can assess the how intelligent then asking the educational history and the work record also you can assess the intelligence ask the patient to do the simple mathematics so you can ask the subtract it in the two numbers and ask him to do the subtractions or the multiplications also can give the general intelligence of the that subject test for the reasoning or the aptitudes of test can use the fair idea of the uh, general intelligence of the that subject then the memory you can assess the test the recent uh, past and the immediate memory or the remote memory also by asking the different questions in brain injuries and the recent memory is affected much more than the past memory it is also called a retrograde amnesia whenever we have any uh, because of the electro convulsive treatment whenever uh, in the earlier days they used to give the electro convulsive uh, therapy Uh, for the some of the patients who are suffering with the different types of uh, psychiatric disorders or any concussion injury, whenever we have a head injury where we have transient loss of uh, consciousness, also can cause the this loss of recent memory. Also, as retrograde amnesia, which can be lost from the what are the events uh, that uh, happened uh, before that uh, trauma or the before electroconvulsive uh, therapy. Uh, to a uh, years also uh, sometimes it can be last for the even for the some of the years also the test of the memory is the immediate memory within the 30 seconds the recent memory or the remote of the long term memory the memory even occurred within the 30 seconds so the, uh, the immediate memory as the patient to recall the memory of the digits uh, from the forward to uh, the backward uh, uh, this is a 
does to the uh, does the email or you can give the number or mobile number you ask him to or the landline or some number and you ask him to repeat the number uh, the center for the immediate memory uh, present in the frontal lobe pre-cell vein in cortex is the, the center is located in the uh, frontal lobe um, peri cell vein cortex the recent memory the memory of events occurs from the minutes to weeks and the months the patient is asked to recall the repeated uh, three words after three to five minutes of after suppose if you uh, give some uh, words and you ask the subject after three to five minutes again ask him to repeat the same words the center for this uh, recent memory will be located in the amelothalamic tracts and the hippocampus the cause of loss of the recent memory can occur in psychosis like the post-cough psychosis Remote memory, the memory of the events occurred years back, like the memory of the school days. And when we ask him the subject, even the teenagers, so what has happened, what things are in another day, what are the college events, or what the things that happened in the native place. Even the center for this will be possibly association cortex and the limbic cortex will for the remote memory. The cause of memory, of the remote la memory loss occurs in the Alzheimer's disease or even the multiple infarct, even alcoholism, even vernix uh, uh, encephalopathy will cause the remote memory loss. In the speech, the human beings are the uh, can only expect his feeling, express his feeling, ideas, thoughts by using the symbols of the words uh, representing the uh, ideas and the things. Uh, the ability to understand and express uh, the symbols is the one of the highest functions of the human brain. Uh, the, the is the speech. It is the one of the higher uh, ability to understand the express uh, in symbols are the uh, is the one of the highest functions of the human brain. The speech has two components: a receiving or the sensory component, the vision or the hearing, and the expressing or the motor component, the spoken or the written uh, of speech. The results of the speech can be aphasias or the dysarthrias. The how will you assess the speech? The comprehension, whether he is able to understand the conversation or the questioning, is to assess the comprehension. The spontaneous speech, observe for the words of output, melody, and the length of the speech for the spontaneous speech. Naming the repetition, ask the subject to repeat the short sentences of the single words. Oh, the naming the repetition speech. Reading is the assessing the defect of reading. Writing the assess the grammar, the word order, and the spelling. These are the things to assess the speech assessment. The aphasias, loss of ability to understand the symbols, the uh, maybe the sensory or the fluid also called as the vernix aphasia, or the sensory aphasia or the vernix aphasia. Ah, or the motor or the non-fluent or the Broca's aphasia due to lesions of the Broca's area. It is due to the uh, lesions of the vernix area. The what is the global aphasia? The global aphasia where the lesions involving both the vernix and the Broca's area, both the motor and the sensory aphasia, cause the bro, uh, global aphasia. Or what is anomic aphasia? Naming the and the word findings become impaired due to the lesions involving the Left hemisphere, including the middle and the temporal gyrus, causes the anomic aphasia. Naming the word finding in the becomes impaired due to the lesions of the left hemisphere, including the middle and the temporal gyrus. Then, what is dysarthria? Dysarthria is a simple inability to utter the words through the patient's knows what to say. He knows what to say, but is a difficult difficulty in the spoken speech. Uh, it is also uh, imperfect vocalization. The muscles of uh, expressing the speech cannot be used effectively in the dysarthria. The types of dysarthria, the one is a stammering, another one is a lolly. Uh, the stammering is a development disorder uh, where it is more common in the boys compared to the girls. Uh, it is a very rare due to the organic brain diseases. And lolling are the uh, baby speech, all the difficult uh, words are draw, difficult uh, consonants are dropped in the baby speech or lolling. The person uh, speaks like a baby due to the, any congenital or the infantile deafness will produce the uh, lolling. 
the speech is a louder than the normal usually the mini mental scale examination it is a scoring uh, basing uh, you can do the scoring you can give you know, first uh, it is have a five score uh, where we are asked the date day month year and season like the etc you can ask the five questions you know, then the restation you ask the subject to name the three object uh, ask him to repeat uh, uh, three subjects we will go give this here yeah. then the his attention and the calculation ask the subject to give the any calculation even the ask the subject to do the things serially okay? and you ask the subject to recall the what the three object he has uh, said yeah, and he has done during the registration this is a mini scale uh, uh, mini mental scale examination this is a uh, consists of the uh, 11 components uh, this is the first one having a five score the second one is having five score a repetition of the word is having the three score then the repetition of the whether is done in telling the serially it is having the five score and uh, we suppose you ask the uh, spell the word and you ask the subject to repeat in the reverse direction you are having the five score and recall the word the three words he has said in the at the stage three it is a three words uh, name uh, by showing the watch or the pencil uh, whether he uh, gives a command whether he is obeying by reading whether whether is suppose if you ask the give the close your eyes whether he is after reading is obeying or not copy the design by giving the pentagons and uh, ask him to write a sentence uh, ask him to uh, repeat the following no six buts and uh, and you having score and three stages command uh, take a paper in your right hand fold in half put Right on the floor, whether he is able to perform these things, depending on these things, the mini scale, mini mental scale, you will get total score of maximum thirty. If he is getting a score of twenty-three, is having the organic disease. The language and copying are subject to uh, name the pencil. Uh, read and obey the following. Whether he is closing the eyes, ask the patient to copy the design like the two intersecting pentagons. Ask the subject. Patient to write a sentence, repeat the followings, uh, uh, ifs and buts also. Uh, there is following the three stages. Cover, pick up a paper in right hand, fold it on and place in the floor. A total score of thirty yeah, at the different eleven stages. Uh, uh, if he is getting less than twenty-three score, so this is the uh, uh, organic lesions of the brain. This is uh, one of the any mental scale examination most commonly used by the. Neurologist and the psychiatrist. Okay? The observations. Uh, uh, you ask them write the name and subject, level of the consciousness, whether you having any delusions or the having any disturbance in the sleep, memory, recent past, intelligence, whether is the orientation time to the. You have to assess the speech. Okay. Now we will uh, uh, see the some of the videos. Okay. Today I will show the examination of the spatial Higher cerebral function. Really, the higher cerebral function, first of all, consists of the assessment of the level of consciousness. Consciousness means that the patient is aware and alert for both self and environment and is able to respond to internal changes, for example, hunger, and for external changes. Really, the assessment of the level of consciousness, the, the patient may take one of the following forms that, we, that will be described just a few moments later. Uh, by the level or the stimuli, by which the patient can be aroused. Just like this, if we start the examination and greet the patients, and the patient is responding to you, open his or her eyes, look at you, and uh, responding very well to a stimuli, this state, we call it an alertness, and the patient uh, is alert. 
So I'll show you how the how to assess the level of consciousness. Salam alaikum. John Kamada. Zain inshallah. Okay, so the patient is reacting to me. He's open his uh, eyes and look at me and responding to my questions. So the patient is alert. Second uh, form of disturbed level of consciousness may take the form of uh, what we call it lethargic patient. Lethargic patient just like sleepy uh, patient. He is uh, responding but usually to a louder voice than this voice and the patient open his eyes look at you responding to the stimuli but in a sleepy manner and soon will return back into its uh, basic status once the stimuli is uh, completed. This is what we call it the lethargy. So we have to greet the patient in a louder voice. Instead of normal voice, we have to increase the volume of voice. The third form of altered level of consciousness is what we call it obtendation. And the patient is obtended when he is somewhat uh, confused and uh, responding to you, open his eye and look at you when you shake him or her, just like when you're shaking a patient, he's turning and looking at you, but once the stimuli also is uh, completed, the patient return back into, it, into his or her own basic status. This is obtendation. The fourth step, uh, the fourth form of the altered level of consciousness is what we call it uh, stuporous. The patient is stuporous and the state is stupor. When the patient is unable to respond to any stimuli, seems to lost his level, his consciousness, but responding only to strong stimuli. Really, the strong stimuli, we have many uh, applications for that, but these measures are uh, usually needs a permission from the examination committee at the time of the exam and may take the form of pressure at the supra orbital ridges, just like this pressure, or with uh, a blunt object, hard blunt object at the sternum, or squeezing of the Achilles tendon. These measures are, cons are considered uh, painful to the patient, and a patient with this measure, if he is responding to them, so the patient is situbous. Otherwise, if the patient unable to respond even to this measure, this state we call it coma, and the patient became comatose. Really, the disturbance of the level of consciousness had many causes, and the uh, candidate should know about uh, them very carefully. of the higher cerebral function is to assess the speech. Really, in the assessment of speech, uh, we have to test the language contents of the patient and we have to uh, test also the articulation and phonation, the speech in general. Really, we have two steps in the assessment. All these two steps are uh, designated just to elicit whether the patient had any disturbance in the speech in the form of aphasia or dysphasia, and dysarthria, and dysphonia or ophonia. Uh, what is meant by aphasia or dysphasia are usually used uh, inter interchangeably during the clinical uh, training, which means that the patient had a defect or difficulty in the language. While the dysarthria means that the patient had a difficulty in articulation, and that of dysphonia means decreased ability to vocalize, while aphonia means unable, unability to vocalize. First of all, I'll test the language ability of the patient by asking him the following uh, questions and order him the following uh, comments. Really, I'll start with comprehension, then fluency, then naming, repetition, reading, and writing. First step, comprehension. I'll offer to the patient a paper, and I'll ask him to fold it in half, 
and keep it in his pocket if he had, or under his leg, for example. Let's see what this is. Let's put it in the middle and let's put it in the middle and let's put it in the middle. <coughs> okay, we'll see these are three steps. The first one, the patient had taken the paper, fold it in half, and then keep it either in his pocket or under his uh, leg. Really, when I order the examination or this uh, test for the patient, I take a, a, a place behind the patient, or you can hide your mouth, so as not to make the patient lip read you. Uh, th this is the first step. The second step is the fluency of the patient. We have to ask him about his or her own story. But uh, really, our uh, volunteer had no complaint. But I'll ask him about a previous complaint and to see his fluency in the speech. Ms. Hamad, can you tell us about the situation that you're in? Do you want to talk about it? Okay, uh, we had seen the fluency really in and during the clinical uh, examination and when you have a real uh, patient with uh, uh, with the time illness, the patient will talk, listen to his uh, talking, listen to his uh, language and to see whether the patient had uh, fluent speech or not fluent speech. This is the second step. The third step is Naming, I'll ask the patient about any, about uh, many objects to name it to me. This object should be familiar to the patient. Uh, just like this, I'll ask him the following questions. How should you say <coughs> okay. You really in patient who had aphasia, naming difficulty or what we call it an uh, anomia is the most common feature for patient with aphasia. You have to ask him for uh, about the 20 objects, but at, uh, really when you ask him about uh, five names of uh, objects, you can take a permission from the examination committee that shall or will you continue or uh, not, and you have to listen for uh, his speech. Really, the patient, if he had, if he had any ability to name the patient, this condition is called as anomia. Sometimes, <clears throat> patient may name the patient, but in the following manner. For example, when I ask him, what is this? And instead of saying this is a pen, he will say the thing that writes. Okay, instead of that. Sometimes the patient may provide with wrong term or with wrong uh, word, substitution of uh, words. For, for example, if we, in Arabic, for example, if, if I ask him what is this, and instead of uh, saying qalam, he will say melam. This condition, what we call it. Uh, Paraphasia, and we have many forms of uh, paraphasia. This is the third step. <clears throat> the fourth step, I'll ask him the patient a simple sentence, and he had to repeat it after me. I'll ask him the following sentence. Ms. Hamad, can you tell me what I the to the school? Okay, this is a simple sentence, just to test the patient's ability to repeat the sentence or he had the ability, capability to repeat the sentence or not. After that, I'll ask him to, about the reading. Really, in reading, uh, the best action is to ask the patient to read motor comments, motor acts. acts. For example, I'll, I'll write for him the following sentences. Okay, if we had a focusing here, 
I'll ask him the following acts. First of all, I'll ask him to raise his right hand or arm. Then I'll ask him to withdraw his leg and then to raise the left hand. For example, I'll ask him to read them and to Before testing mental status, explain the examination to the patient. In the examination, include assessments of orientation, short-term memory, naming objects, following commands, mathematical calculations, word finding, concentration, spatial orientation and construction, judgment, long-term memory, and abstract reasoning. Comprehension and expression of written and spoken language, as well as speech, can also be assessed during the mental status examination. Hello. Good How morning. are you feeling? Um, well, doctor, I'm having a little problem with my memory. Uh, okay. I'm going to ask you some questions just to see how you're thinking. Some of them will be easy, some will be hard. Don't get upset, okay? okay. For example, how old are you? I'm 54. Okay. Now, do you know where you're at today? Certainly. I'm in Philadelphia, and I'm at Einstein Medical Center. Very good. Now, let's say you had to call a taxi to get you home from here. Can you give general directions on how you would get home from here? Yes. I would tell the taxi driver to um, take um, Broad Street, and then take Broad Street mm -hmm. south to Christian Street, and left on Christian Street. Oh, very good. And today is? Monday. And the month is? June. Very good. Okay, I'm going to tell you three objects, and I want you to remember them for five minutes. I'll ask you again later, so you repeat them after I say them. Okay. A red rose. A red rose. A black puppy dog. A black puppy dog. 1200 North Broad Street. 1200 North Broad Street. Why don't you try saying them one last time? Okay. A red rose, a black puppy dog, and 1200 North Broad Street. Very good. Now. What would you call this? A watch. Okay. If the tiger was killed by the lion, which animal would be dead? The tiger. Very good. Can you say no, ands, ifs, or buts? No, ands, ifs, or buts. Okay. Can you read this? Lift up your right hand. Very good. Thank you. Can you uh, write, it is a fine spring day? It is a fine spring day. Good, very good. Okay. How many nickels are there in a dollar? Um, there are 20 nickels. Okay. Can you show me your right little finger? Okay, fine. This one's a little hard, so take your time. A lot of people can do this in one minute, but you relax and try and name 10 cities, 10 countries, 10 colors, and 10 vegetables. It's called Isaac <laughs> Set Test. Let's see, ready, mm, okay. go. 10 cities, right. okay. And just go um, one to the other. New York City, Boston, Philadelphia, Sacramento, San Francisco, Austin, um, Tampa, Miami, Orlando, and um, Chapel Hill. Okay, keep oh, going 10 now. 10 countries, okay. okay. The United States, um, South America, Latin America, England, Ireland, France, uh, Switzerland, Germany, Turkey, Greece. Okay, keep going. Oh, what was the, um, uh, ten, 10 cities, colors. 10 countries, 10 colors. Right. Um, red, green, blue, orange, black, um, white, yellow, um, turquoise, pink, 
and coral. Oh, very good. Can you do 10 fruits? 10 fruits, yeah. okay. Strawberries, blueberries, peaches, apples, oranges, kiwi, um, bananas, um, grapes. <laughs> you did great. Can you spell world backwards? World backwards, W-O-R-L-D, um, D-L-R-O-W. Very good. W-O-R-L-D, okay. Take a look at this. Okay. It's a cube. Pretend it's some famous artist, like a Picasso, and you're doing a forgery. Down here, can you make a copy of that? S sure. Thank you. Uh-oh. Oh, you're doing great. A okay. Bit short on a the little upside. bit short. <laughs> okay. Very so good. And uh, what were those three things I asked you to remember? You asked me to remember a red rose, a black puppy dog, and 1200 North Broad Street. Very good. Thank you. <laughs>
नाउ यू गो फॉर लिट कैलकुलेशन टेस्ट थोड़ा गणित के बारे में थोड़ा बातचीत करेंगे स्वप्निल साहब हाँ सर ये बताइए कि चार में से दो गया तो कितना रहता है चार में से दो गया दो रहेगा आठ में से छह गए थे दो रहेगा अच्छा एक छोटा सा टेस्ट करेंगे हम हंड्रेड में से सात माइनस करिएगा फिर जो संख्या आया उसमें से सात और एक जो संख्या है उसमें से सात थोड़ा सा दो तीन बार ऐसा करके कोशिश करिए थोड़ा हंड्रेड में से सेवन माइनस किए तो नाइन्टी थ्री नाइन्टी थ्री से सेवन माइनस किए तो एटी सिक्स एटी सिक्स से सेवन माइनस किए तो एटी वन एटी वन से सेवन माइनस किए तो फिर सेवेंटी फोर बढ़िया बढ़िया थैंक यू थैंक यू कैलकुलेशन पार्ट इज करेक्ट वी डिट वी गेव द सब्जेक्ट सिंपल कैलकुलेशन एंड हंड्रेड माइनस सेवन टेस्ट एवरीथिंग वॉज करेक्ट अबाउट कैलकुलेशन ना वी गो फॉर द जजमेंट टेस्टिंग सुपनील एक बताइए कि समझ लीजिए आप रास्ते में जा रहे हैं हाँ सर और एक आदमी आपके सामने जा रहा है उसके हाथ से कुछ गिर गया हाँ सर आपने देखा कि वो लेटर है लेटर में एड्रेस वगैरह लिखा हुआ था हाँ इस परिस्थिति में क्या करना चाहिए अपने को आ, सबसे पहले तो लेटर उठा के यदि वो इंसान सामने तो उसको दे देंगे यदि वो सामने नहीं है तो सिर्फ पोस्ट में डाल देंगे सर अच्छा ओके समझ लीजिए आप बैठे हुए हैं घर में कुर्सी में और आग लग गई अचानक तो क्या करेंगे आप आग लग गई तो सर पानी ढूंढूंगा भाग जाऊंगा ओके यस यस करेक्ट करेक्ट जजमेंट इज नॉर्मल नाउ वी गो फॉर द एब्स्ट्रैक्ट रीजनिंग आपको एक मैं मुहावरा देंगे आ, उसका उससे आपको क्या समझ में आता है आप थोड़ा बताएंगे है ना जिनके घर शीशों में बने रहते हैं वो दूसरों के घर में पत्थर नहीं फेंकना चाहिए इस मुहावरा से क्या समझ में आता है इसे समझ में आता है सर कि दूसरे की तरफ उंगली उठाने से पहले आप खुद की तरफ देखिए आपकी कमजोरी क्या है आपकी वीकनेसेस क्या है यस करेक्ट वेरी गुड ये बताइए कि टिट फॉर टैट एक बहुत फेमस इंग्लिश प्रोवर्ब है इसका क्या मतलब है इसका मतलब यह है कि जैसे के साथ वैसा करना चाहिए अच्छा जैसा करेंगे वैसा भोगो, भोगोगे आप अरे यस यस करेक्ट 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 द वे आवर कन्वर्सेशन वेंट ऑन इट इज वेरी प्रिटी क्लियर दैट द फ्लुएंसी is correct his speech is normal it's seem, it is seemingly normal the fluency whatever he told was correct but still there are certain nuances to test for the speech we go for it fluency i assume that it is normal he told all the addresses and all very correctly and with a fluent uh, conversation we go for the comprehension test acha swapnil ji bataiye ke ye ghar ye jo room hai ye room mein light source kahan se aa raha hai सर छत पे से लाइट में लगे हुए उनसे आ रहा है सर अच्छा ये बताइए कि गर्मी के दिनों में स्वेटर पहनने की जरूरत पड़ती है क्या बात गर्मी के दिन में स्वेटर पहनेंगे सर और गर्मी पड़ेगी अच्छा आ, वो बारिश के दिनों में बहुत ज्यादा धूप निकलती है क्या नहीं बारिश के मौसम में सिर्फ बारिश ही गिरेगी ज्यादा बारिश गिरेगी अगर समझ लीजिए एक आदमी और हाथी में कुश्ती का लड़ाई करेंगे हम तो कौन जीतने का चांसेस ज्यादा है हाथी जीतने का चांसेस ज्यादा है सर हाँ ठीक हाथी तो जीते गए तो द कॉम्प्रीहेंशन पार्ट इज करेक्ट एंड ग्रामर टिल नाउ अगेन विद द कन्वर्सेशन द सब्जेक्ट द वे इज स्पीकिंग वे इज अंडरस्टैंडिंग ग्रामर आई एज्यूम दैट ग्रामर ग्रामेटिकली इज करेक्ट ये बताइए ये क्या है सर शर्ट की बटन है सर अच्छा ये मोबाइल फोन है सर ये क्या है पेन है सर लिखने ओके सो नेमिंग ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट इज करेक्ट मैं आपको एक सेंटेंस uh, बोलता हूँ mm-hmm. वो मेरे साथ मेरे को बोलिए फिर से बताइए कोविड नाइन्टीन इन्फेक्शन कोरोना वायरस करता है कोविड नाइन्टीन इन्फेक्शन कोरोना वायरस करता है इसी चीज़ को थोड़ा रिपीट करिए दो तीन बार ये सेंटेंस को कोविड नाइन्टीन इन्फेक्शन कोरोना करता है कोविड नाइन्टीन इन्फेक्शन कोरोना करता है कोविड नाइन्टीन इन्फेक्शन कोरोना करता है अच्छा ओके थैंक यू रिपीटेशन इज करेक्ट अच्छा मैं आपको एक चीज़ देता हूँ वो पढ़िए पढ़ पढ़ने में आ रहा है क्या हाँ सर आचार्य विनोभा भावे रूरल हॉस्पिटल सावंधी नगर वर्धा डिपार्टमेंट नेम मेडिसिन डिपार्टमेंट बेड नंबर फोर्टीन यूनिट थ्री वार्ड बेड नंबर वन सिक्सटी फोर यूनिट थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू कुछ लिख के मेरे को बताइए आप कुछ लिखिए डॉक्टर शौर्य 
थैंक यू थैंक यू सो वी टेस्टेड हायर फंक्शन इन दैट वी टेस्टेड द ओरिएंटेशन देन वी टेस्टेड मेमोरी वी टेस्टेड कैलकुलेशन वी टेस्टेड जजमेंट वी टेस्टेड एफ्ट्रैक्ट रीजनिंग देन इन द स्पीच अंडर द सेवन हेडिंग्स वी टेस्टेड दैट इज अ फ्लुएंसी कॉम्प्रीहेंशन ग्रामर नेमिंग रिपीटेशन रीडिंग एंड राइटिंग दिस इज हाउ ए हायर फंक्शन टेस्ट शुड बी कंडक्टेड बेट साइड थैंक यू Um so I'm not sure coming but I'm not too sure I'm here for. Okay good afternoon Mr Spalding. Yes. Uh my name is Vivek Menon. Yes. I'm one of the student doctors here. Yeah. So uh I've been told that you've been having some uh memory problems. I do it yeah a little bit yeah. So I was just wondering if I could ask you a few questions uh as a as a sort of a test yeah, sure. to find out how you're going with yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay that's, okay. that's about memory. Oh uh, yes. Yeah, okay. So is it okay if I start the yes, test? Yes. Just yeah. be a bunch of questions okay. and Okay. So can I ask you what the day is today? Today, uh I have a pretty busy week. I think it's I think it's Friday. Okay. And what uh what is the date? Uh yes, I was a short day, 21, 22. Okay. And what is the month? June. Uh the year? To to live it now. To talk. Okay. And what season is it now? Well, it's pretty freezing, it must be winter. That's cool. Yes, yeah, I think. Okay, so now can I just ask you what country we are in right now? What country? What country? Uh, oh, it's, it's West Australia. Okay. Yeah. And what state are we in? Hello, sir. Uh, no, I think we're in New South. I think. Yep. So, And what city or town are we in right now? Sydney. Uh, but what is the name of the city? Sydney. Uh no the the town that we're in right Oh now? um Cardiff Uh but what is the oh. greater area of Oh Newcastle okay. uh, yeah, sorry yeah, yeah Um and what hospital are we in right now Uh John Hunter And uh, and in what floor or what area are we in Uh okay now I do Okay I just came in and some followed some signs and yeah That's good. Um okay next I'm just going to ask I'm going to repeat three words to you mm-hmm. and I I'd like to re- you to repeat after me and I'm going to ask you some questions and afterwards I'd like you to recall what these three words were is okay, that okay? Fine. Yeah, fine. Okay. The three words are ball, tree and flag. Ball, tree and flag. I'll give you some are, are you able to remember? I think so. Yeah. Ball, tree, flag. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Next Uh I'm just going to ask you to do a brief uh, sort of calculation question. I'm going to ask you to start from 100. Mm-hmm. And I'd like you to subtract 7 by that serially. Are you able to do that? 100 Starting from 100, 7. Just keep minusing 7 and the number. 93. Uh, 93. 93. Okay. Uh 93. Seven, 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 seven. 86. Okay, carry on. 69 uh, not 69 uh 69 uh, uh, the next one 74 seventy, no, 70 72 and the next 72 uh 64 65 okay and uh, just with that i'm going to ask you to spell a word um, uh, to spell a word for me mm-hmm. and the word is world mm-hmm. can you spell that out for me Spell it out. Spell W O R L D. Yes. Now can I get you to spell it backwards? D R L R L W O. Okay. Uh, can I? No. Uh, can you repeat that again? R L R L W O. Another another letter somewhere. D, uh, D. 
Uh, that wasn't correct, but no. it was a good try. Okay. Uh, we'll just move on and, and I'll ask, it was actually D-L-R-O-W. Oh, okay. But that's a good try anyway. And I'm just going to ask you to recall for me the three words that I said to you just now. Are you able to do that? Three, I think it was one. That's all I think. I can't, can't remember the others. The three words we. Yeah. Are you able to. I remember you saying it. The only one I can think of was tree. That's the only one that's stuck in my mind. No. That's good, but yeah. anything else? No. No? Okay. Um, now I'm just going to ask uh, just a couple of questions to get your general knowledge. Uh, so do you know who the Prime Minister of Australia is at this time? Uh, she's a female, I think. Uh, right, right, Kevin Rudd. No, Julie Gillard. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you know who the Premier of New South Wales is? Uh, I reckon girl, Christine, Christine. No, she's gone. Uh, Barry. Same name as me, I should remember that, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you know who the President of the United States is? Uh, Obama? Yeah. yeah. So that's just a brief overview of the questions that, I'm, yeah. that I've asked. And you did pretty well. However, there are some discrepancies that, uh, that, that I can see to do with your memory. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we should look into that further with some further tests. Well, I do have a bit of trouble. I, I tend to walk out of a room and forgot what I, walk, what I went into another room for. I've got to go back where I started from to try and remember what I, where I got to. Mm. So we, we will try to look into this further. So we can solve your problem that for you. That would be good. That would be Does good. Does that sound good? Just get a bit of a pain, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you. All right. So the... I think with this uh, video, we can conclude the today's session. All of you take care of yourself, okay? Thank you.